Welcome friends. This is a video for absolute beginner crocheters. Um, you've never done it before and you'd love to know how. I have um, a couple friends who've been asking me how to teach them and so I thought I would start them off with a video and you are welcome to learn as well. Today, the first thing you need to have are your materials and we're going to be using a size J hook today. And we're going to be using some good old uh, just worsted weight 100% acrylic yarn. This is the easiest, best yarn to learn on. Um, I have Red Heart Super Saver. It's a great brand. There's other brands. It doesn't have to be this brand. But just make sure when you're looking at the yarn that it has a four on it. Medium worsted weight yarn. Um, and while we're here, I'll just point out that um, the labels always have a recommended size hook. This is recommending size I9 hook. But we're going to go a size up today because we're learning and I find it a little easier to learn on a bigger size hook. Okay, so get definitely get a size J hook. Get some 100% acrylic worsted weight yarn. And while you're at the store, you might as well pick up a couple other things. So um, I would just get a good assortment of size hooks, okay? Um, between size G and K. So this is a G hook. Here's an H. This one has a nice wooden uh, grip handle on it. Here's a size I. J that we're using today and a K. So you might as well pick those up while you're at the store. These are all metal hooks. You can also find plastic hooks. You can find wooden hooks. For acrylic yarn, I don't think it matters. Um, metal and plastic are pretty easy to find. So, all right. Other things you should pick up while you're at the store, you might as well. Um, tapestry needles. Um, you're always going to have ends to weave in at the end of your project. This is a plastic one that's straight. Here's a metal one that has a curve. Doesn't really matter. Um, just pick up a couple of these. Pick up some stitch markers. This is really handy for um, different kinds of projects, but when you're learning, they're really handy to mark that last stitch um, in your row so that you know where you're going next. It can be a little tricky to see the stitches at first when you're learning crochet. So this will really help you. Make sure you have scissors and um, make sure you have a measuring device. You don't have to go out and buy one. If you have a good old ruler at home, you can also use a measuring tape. Just something to measure with. It's what you want. Okay. So today we're going to learn um, how to hold our hook, how to hold the yarn, and we're going to be learning these two techniques today because we're going to be starting with our foundation chain. Um, foundation chains start almost every crochet project. And um, so we're going to learn that today. These are the abbreviations that you will find in patterns. So you're going to learn, start learning your crochet lingo. YO is the same as yarn over and chain stands for chain. I didn't say that right. <laughs> Y-O equals yarn over and C-H equals chain. Okay. Um, so let's start about, let's start learning about um, how to hold your hook. Most people hold their hook like a pen. Um, that's comfortable for a lot of people. I like to hold mine like a knife. So you get to decide what you like. Um, you can give them both a try and see. With your yarn skein, try to pull from the center of the yarn. Try to find that end from the, the middle. If you can't, then you can find it on the outside, but it will keep your yarn so much neater if you can pull from the, from the inside of the yarn. So let's find our end here. So before we begin, we got to start talking about how we hold the yarn in our non-dominant hand. I'm right-handed so I'm going to hold my hook with my right hand. With my left hand I'm going to hold my yarn. The whole point of 
your left hand is to create tension with the yarn so that you can easily grab it with your hook. And I'll show you what that looks like. Um, you know what, before I do this, I wanna tell everyone, when you're first learning crochet, it feels really awkward. It's, you know, I, I've tried to teach a couple people and they've got, they've become so frustrated because um, it looks easy to do um, and they just weren't prepared for the level of like discomfort that you can have when you first start because it just feels so awkward holding that hook and that yarn. So if you have realistic expectations that this is going to take some time for it to flow because you're, you're learning something new, you're creating new pathways in your brain, you're learning new muscle memory. Um, just have that expectation and you will be easier on yourself and you won't become so frustrated. So the first thing we're going to do before we talk about holding the yarn is we're going to create a slip knot. We're going to get our first bit of yarn onto our hook. Okay, so slip knots are pretty easy. You create a circle with your yarn like that, and then you take the end and you go behind the yarn. Okay, you can kind of see, it kind of looks like a pretzel almost. And then you take your hook and you grab that yarn behind the circle, and then you just pull it tight. And there's your slip knot. And we want to snug this up to our hook. Not too tight. Okay, let me show you that I, you see I have some wiggle room there, and that's good. You don't want your, um, your loop to be too tight, your slip knot to be too tight on your hook. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get your loop through that, um, sorry, your yarn through that loop very easily. So just know that when you first begin crocheting, your tendency is to hold everything really, really tightly, like gripping it like your life depends on it. But your goal is to have a gentle, light touch and to let things just glide easily through. It's going to take time. It does not come naturally. It's just part of the learning process. Okay, so we have our slip knot on our hook. Now we're gonna create some tension with this yarn so that we can easily grab the yarn with our hook. Right now, I mean, if we're just holding this, it's not gonna be easy to grab if you could do it at all. So most people, they create tension by wrapping it around their pinky, wrapping the yarn around their pinky, and then going past their middle finger and going over the top of their pointer finger. And that's how they create tension, okay? And what I mean by that is now you have this tight, taut piece of yarn, section of yarn that is easy to grab with your hook. That's your whole goal of this hand, okay? And to also feed the yarn as you create. Okay, so that's one way to hold the yarn. I like to just put it over my pointer finger, clamp it with my middle finger, and then with my two fingers at the bottom, hold it like that. That's how I do it. So you can try either way, and as you go, um, you might even find a different way to hold the yarn, but um, this is the standard way to do it. So you can start off by just wrapping it around your pinky, going up over your middle finger and um, over your pointer finger, okay? And then what I like to do is I like to hold this knot with my middle finger and my um, thumb, okay? And then you have a really nice stable setup here, okay? So here we are. Remember, you can hold your hook like a pen if you want. I hold mine like a knife. So we're going to yarn over and pull through our loop. Okay, so to yarn over, you are going to, your hook is pointed up, 
You're going to yarn over, turn your hook so it's facing down, and now you've got a good grab on that yarn, and you're going to pull through the loop. Okay, you've made one chain. Congratulations. <laughs> okay, so let's try that again. You're going to yarn over. Oh, I'm not in the camera. Yarn over and pull through the loop. Okay, so notice how your hook changes directions as you do that movement. Yarn over, pull through the loop. Okay, and I like to kind of move up the chain with my thumb and middle finger as I make my foundation chain. Okay, yarn over. See, pull through the loop. Yarn over. Pull through the loop. That's it. That is making a foundation chain. So let's make let's make ten more. Now, as your in your your left hand or whatever your non-dominant hand is. Um, you're, you know, you're pulling at this yarn, so it's feeding through your little um, pathway of yarn on your hand. So if you're gripping this really tightly, which is the tendency when you're learning, you're not going to be, it's not going to feed through very easily. So you kind of have to think about just having a light grip on this yarn. Okay. And you just got to be kind to yourself. It takes time for your brain to be comfortable with that. So let's try 10 more. Yarn over, pull through a loop. One, two, three, four, at our chain. It's pretty even. It's not perfect. The goal is not perfection. Um, not in my mind. This is a handmade thing, but you want it to be as even as you as you can. Um, and you can see with the chain stitch that there it's a v-shape. See how that's one chain, that's one chain. It's a v-shape. If you turn it over, See, there's these vertical bumps, or not vertical, horizontal <laughs> bumps. Um, and that's one chain. Let's see if I can point it out. So right there, that's one chain. Just take note of that, um, because in our next video, we're going to start creating single crochets into each chain. Okay, so... What you need to do before you move on to that next video is make sure you're comfortable holding your hook and creating tension with the other hand, creating tension with your yarn, and you're comfortable doing your foundation chains. And they're pretty even. Don't move on until you get that because you really, if you move on too quickly with crochet, you're really just setting yourself up for disappointment and frustration. So just have patience and practice this until you have a nice even chain and you're not gripping onto the hook and the yarn so tightly that things don't flow. So get that flow first and even chains and then go on to the next video. Good luck.